Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are diving into one of the most important but also most overlooked components in Copilot Studio, instructions. Now, if you saw the overview video, you will remember that instructions help define how the agent behaves and, and responds. But in this video, we are going deeper. I will show you how instructions really work, how they are structured, how you can use them to make your agent sound smarter and feel more natural. Let's take a look at the diagram and break it down. So what are instructions? Instructions help shape your agent's response, not just what it says, but how it thinks, makes decisions, and presents information. So when we talk about conversational-based instructions, there are four main categories you can configure. We have the constraints. These are the rules that set the boundaries for your agent. So for example, you can tell it to avoid certain topics or to only use internal sources or not to speculate. Think of these as setting limits on what the agent can or can say. Then we have response format. This controls how the response is delivered. So you can ask the model to answer in a list, keep it short, use a markdown, or even return a JSON if needed. It's really useful when consistency in output matter. You also have guidance. This gives the model extra context to help it reason through more complex situations. So you can explicitly instruct your agent to prioritize certain information, clarify ambiguous inputs, or follow a specific order when processing a task. Finally, we have tool selection. If your agent has multiple tools it could use, uh, you can think of um, connectors or agent flows uh, or more. These instructions help choose the right one. So you can define preferences or tell the model under what conditions to call each tool. I particularly use this more in autonomous agents where you have multiple tools and you need to define the, the order of uh, tools to be executed. So that's the idea. Instructions help your agent not only sound better, but make smarter decisions behind the scenes. Now let's jump into the demo so I can show you how to set this up and what kind of impact they have on, on the user experience. Okay, now let's continue exploring our existing agent uh, and let's improve the way this agent will respond. In previous videos, we explored how easily it was to create our agent, include the description and some instructions, as well as configure some knowledge sources, including public websites and SharePoint source, including specific documents, folders, or even a complete SharePoint document library or site. However, if we want this agent to provide better responses and more accurate responses, it's better to provide instructions, detailed instructions of how we want the agent to respond. To do that, we have an instruction section here. If you remember, when we created the agent for the first time, we provided a very basic instructions. We wanted the agent to be friendly and polite, to maintain a personal, uh, professional tone, as we see here, to provide detailed information, and that's it. But in this case, I'm going to click on Edit, and we will remove these in existing instructions, and, and we will start providing more detail. There are some best practices that we can follow on how to document these instructions, but in this case, um, I'm going to start by basically providing a standard format. It's important when defining the instructions to specify the purpose of this agent. We already provided some of those details in the description, and it's, this is good. However, providing the purpose in the instructions is even more relevant because this will provide some additional context for your agent to know what's the, the main scope of this agent. So I'm pasting this description. I'm specifying that this is a supportive and knowledgeable onboarding assistant that is dedicated to helping managers on a streamlining the new hire onboarding process. And I'm providing some details that we already reviewed in previous videos, such as the scope, right? What specific tasks will this agent assist, such as registering new employees, assigning onboarding bodies, tracking onboarding process, and more. So this is the first thing we will update on the description. Let me just save the first set of uh, instructions. And then the other uh, relevant part here is uh, the overall direction. So I'm going to copy because I already have these details in a separate document. And we will review some sample instructions that are relevant to provide here. So as you see here, we have a limited amount of characters that we can use, but we are still on the range. Let me just save this. So you can see there is a total of 8,000 characters that, can, that we can use and we are still okay. 
So let me explore, let's explore together the, the instructions that I have provided. A good practice is to define, for example, how this uh, agent should respond. In this case, I am specifying that it should be approachable. It should use phrases such as absolutely, certainly, here you go, to create a, a friendly tone. I am specifying things like using emoticons when possible to be brief and simple. I want to maintain a professional supportive tone. So now additional details like, for example, asking clarifying or follow-up questions when needed and many others that you can see here right and even an interesting one like at the end of each interaction on a specific topic please let me know how i did now let's test the same question we asked before to see the changes once i provide uh, the instructions i want to see how this agent will respond now so if I ask, when do I get access to my work email and tools? Again, it's looking into the specific knowledge sources and based on that, it's providing a response. So you will start to notice some changes. In this case, for example, something that we can notice is that it's using emoticons. It's asking, for example, to, to provide feedback. How did I, did I do? Let's try uh, another question that we asked previously as well. So again, you can refine your instructions to get uh, better responses. Again, we can see the, in this case, emoticons and other considerations when responding. So now you know how to use instructions to shape your agent's tone, behavior, and overall personality. Up next, we will explore connectors and how they allow your agent to take real action by interacting with external systems like SharePoint, Teams, and more. If you're finding this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I would love to hear what kind of agent you're building. See you in the next video.